Hello and welcome to this Techarati interview series ahead of Data Center World on the 8th and 9th of March at Excel London. I'm Stuart Crowley, Closer Still Media's Global Content Manager and Editor of Techarati. And today with me, I have Sophia Flucker. She is the Managing Director at Operational Intelligence and will join Data Center World for a fireside chat. So how are you today, Sophia? I'm very well, thank you, Stuart. Great to have you. So. Um, what do you feel is is um, a significant challenge in the data center industry for C-level executives, managing directors like yourself? There's probably a couple of key issues. One, one of them I would say is the skill shortage in the industry. And I, I think that's really affecting businesses no matter which part of the supply chain they're in. Um, so in, in terms of addressing that, it, it's kind of a, it's a bigger question because I think there's a shortage of engineers in, in general. Um, so how, how do we encourage people to, to, to see engineering as an aspirational career? Um, how, how do people find out about the data center industry as, as a place where there are jobs? All, all of those kind of things. It's, it's going to take a, a lot of work, I think, to, to kind of address these kind of issues. Um, of, of course, I think diversity comes into that as well. So if, if we're only mostly having a, a kind of narrow representation of society as a whole, then we're perhaps excluding a lot of people, which, which could kind of help us with, with the numbers and, and with the talent out there. Another one is, is around sustainability. And uh, again, it, it does affect the, the whole supply chain in perhaps in different ways, but the, the kind of imperative to be acting more sustainably, reducing the environmental impact is, is only getting stronger. Mm. So th there's a lot of businesses who are already investing in that, that they're already putting best practices in place. But you know we're, we're starting to see some more technology innovations, and it, it becomes not just about the business case, but there's there's legislation and there's, there's policy shaping it as well. So that's only going to put more pressure on, on making sure we're we're doing more. What do you think is possibly the most significant opportunity for sustainable design, sustainable construction of data centers? Is there something that really excites you, perhaps? I would say probably the part that. Has, can, can make the most difference is, is not something that I get involved in. And that, that's really focusing on the IT side of things. Mm. So, you know, there's been a lot of focus on PUE and making the, the power and cooling systems more, more efficient, which is great. I mean, the, there was obviously a lot that we, we could do to improve that and, and there's, still, there's still work to do that. But in terms of overall, where's the biggest impact? It is around the IT equipment. So reducing the power that it's using, also looking at refresh rates and what happens to that IT equipment once it's disposed of. Yeah. trying to bring some circularity into that supply chain um, because there's a lot of embodied impacts which are not really to do with the energy efficiency just just the fact that there's a lot of critical raw materials in servers in printed circuit boards in electronics in general and i think that's that's not been very visible i think people know that there is an impact and and it's it's bad and, and we should be reducing it but it's quite hard to measure so maybe there hasn't been so much motivation to address that that side of things so there's a lot of computing power that that, would, that we might expect, and as you say, it's quite unmeasurable right now um, with uh, artificial intelligence, big data. Do you think that, do you have any opinions on that as a consumer of power? Do you think it's going to be significant or do you think that that, that might not be as significant as, as perhaps feared? It's certainly going to be significant, um, you know, in Internet of Things and just the number of additional IP connected devices. Uh, I think all, the, all of the, the predictions of the trends are, are indicating that will be sort of the next the next frontier, if you like. Um, but yeah, I think you'd be foolish if you thought you could predict the future uh, at the same time. Um, I, I suppose it's just trying to balance what there's a particular trend there. Will that partially be offset by improvements in, in IT efficiency? perhaps the impact may not be as big as what, what we, we think it might be. Um, but I guess this is what it makes it challenging and, and interesting working in data centers that we're very much technology driven. It's very hard to, to look very far ahead, but we, we need to ha have kind of one eye on, on what, what might be coming up so that we can build in flexibility when, when we're working with facilities. Do you, do you have any theory around why it is difficult to look so far ahead within the in the data center industry and, and perhaps that might be why the measurability of things isn't quite there yet there's a lot of different stakeholders and they're probably quite um disjointed so i mean i'm kind of relatively further down the chain so if we're looking at the power and cooling side of things we're really designing around what does the it hardware need but i i don't have conversations on a regular basis with the people who are dealing with that IT hardware, you know, the people who are 
kind of at the sharp end of of IT design and, and those kind of things. We're, we're finding out about what they're doing quite a lot later. And I, I suppose because it is a, a very innovative and, and fast paced um, area, you know, it, that, that's what makes it unpredictable. I think that there's lots of players in the market, they want to compete with each other. Something that's talked about, which, which people are seeing as, as a challenge, which, which will impact the, the rest of the supply chain is, is around liquid cooling. Yeah. So we, we've kind of done a lot about how, how can we optimize air cooling. And, and I think in, in general, there, there's a lot of good practice out there around it. But then if uh, if the chip density gets to a point where air cooling is, is not really feasible anymore, then we're going to have to flip over and, and completely change how we do things. And people are looking at it now. Um, so Ash Ashray's technical committee on data centers have published some, some guidelines and there's some predictions and there's some discussions around how are we going to deal with that? But I think no one really wants to be the first uh, to dip their toe in. And certainly people are looking at, well, can we do this at scale? Yes, we have liquid cooling now. Yes, for high performance computing, certain applications, it already exists. But when is kind of it going to go mainstream? And when do we have to kind of change our, our way of, of designing things? I think no one wants to get behind one technology to find out that actually oh, that's, that's going to be phased out or they're going to be bought out. and. And actually the, the way to do it is like this, it's, it's kind of a, a risky time. And Part of the debate comes around sustainability on one side and energy efficient, efficiency on one side versus the other side, which is scalability and cost effectiveness. Do you think that these two sides are uh, in conflict with each other or can they can they be harmonious? Absolutely. And, and I think that is a bit of a common myth, actually, that, you know, you, you, it's more expensive to be sustainable or, or that you know you're compromising on reliability mm. and certainly the environment that we work in we do a lot around sustainable design and sustainable optimization of existing facilities and we know it's a, it's a prerequisite that it has to have a certain level of reliability so you don't even entertain anything that's going to save you energy but is going to compromise on reliability you know that, that is the environment that you work in so we're, we're always thinking about risk it doesn't matter what the context is in, in terms of can it can it save money uh, for sure so uh, for example a lot of the the free cooling designs or designs that are using fresh air cooling say with zero refrigeration you're actually using you're dematerializing because you, you don't have that refrigeration equipment mm -hmm. that being the case you can actually size your electrical infrastructure to be less and I, I think although it's very much marketed as we're doing a free cooling we're green well, we're doing free cooling. There's a good business case for it, actually, because the, the capex is less, the opex is less, and um, so, so certainly, but there's a lot of opportunities there. A another area where we're, we're seeing movement, a, a lot of the companies are now committing to renewable energy, hmm. so that that can have a, a cost premium for sure. It, it depends where you are, um, but if you're now having to publicly report on your sustainable performance and the, there's policy kind of pushing you in that direction. Well, you, you have to do it. You don't have a choice. That's that's the price of being competitive and, and being in the market, really. At a glance, um, when I've looked at or, or interviewed people in the data center industry, it's it's often uh, going back to your first answer. In fact, it's usually quite male dominated, um, at a, at a glance at least. So, would would you agree with that? And um, what have your experiences been as as a female leader um, in this industry? Um, it's, it's definitely true. I mean, uh, I think in any of the studies and any of the kind of surveys and, and that kind of thing, it's definitely male dominated. Um, it's, it's not unique in, in that sense. I, I think IT and engineering construction in general t tend to be biased a bit that way. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's not an easy thing to tackle. I, I did kind of touch on diversity earlier, but it, it's kind of a bigger problem around society as a whole, I think. And it, it starts very young when, when children at school Kind of see role models in in different areas and they maybe think okay well th these jobs are for women these jobs are for men you know and they don't see sub subconsciously and they, they don't see themselves necessarily following a particular path and mm. um, has it been challenging i, I think at, at times yes but I, I think things are are changing um it, there are advantages in that everyone remembers who you are <laughs> because you're, you're a bit different to 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 the, the kind of typical people you, you might meet. Um, so yeah, I think there's a long way to go, um, but, but hopefully we are starting to go the, the right way. Um, I, I think in, in the UK, there's a statistic, which is something like 
only 20% of people doing maths A level are female and that that really hasn't changed for a, a particular you know it's been like that forever I'm not sure it's an improving statistic and and perhaps it's it's maybe slightly better in in other countries so again I think this is it is an international market so so perhaps if you look elsewhere they have a bit of a better gender balance in in those places and and maybe there's some things we can learn from from what why is that the case so at data center world with it being tied into tech show london which has four other events what would you say is is the value for you coming to events like this and also what would you say is the value um that people can get from coming to your fireside chat as well it's great to have these opportunities to meet face to face um perhaps out of out of a kind of day-to-day -day project context um everyone has kind of really noticed it perhaps after the pandemic where we we didn't have the opportunities to to, to get together in in the same way mm. so i think certainly the combination of meeting people you you haven't already met but also maybe reinforcing existing relationships that, that can be very valuable to kind of have, have an offline chat say with people um also the, the exhibition side of things is we talked about some innovations and in, in new products that that's always useful because quite a lot of the time they will have the products there on, on display so you can you can kind of really get into the detail and i know a lot of people come because they are they're, they're at the procurement stage of a project so they, they want to be able to kind of meet, meet and meet and greet and kind of d dig into some of the details of, of what might be available um, but but also the, the talks um you know there's quite a range of different things which are being discussed and we're, we're always keen when we're at these events that it's it's not just kind of going to, to listen to a lecture and, and kind of participating passively um I, I think there's a lot of value when when people can participate and ask questions and, and those kind of things as well i think it, it keeps the dialogue going and there's a lot of sort of interesting topics uh which, which people are dealing with right now thinking about your fireside chat what is a question that you would hope to be asked from an audience member? Okay, so the, the theme of my chat is, is very much around data center sustainability and, and how, how do we kind of keep going along that journey? Um, and ultimately, if, it, if the goal is to get to net zero, we, we've got quite a way to go there. Mm. Um, I, I guess probably the, the topic that I've, I've already touched on in our, our discussion is to, to move away from the focus on energy efficiency, because I think we, we've made some good progress in that area, but to, to understand where where people are at and, and what challenges they're they're finding when it comes to that embodied uh, environmental impact side of things, that, I think that's that's where it's 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 not well understood by a lot of people. There's not a lot of awareness, but then that that's only the starting point. You have to be aware of it, but then what are you, what are you dealing with there? So it'd be really interesting to hear some feedback on on where, where people have got to with with addressing that side of things.